Hello, my friends. And that the Holy Spirit may help us, help you, that the Holy Spirit may place words in my mouth that may be able to resurrect you, to bring you to life, that He, the Lord Jesus, in the person of the Holy Spirit, may fulfill His will in your life as also in my life. Look at this. We have been speaking about this word that Jesus said to Martha, Martha, sister of Mary, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They were three siblings and Martha was in search of Jesus that he could resurrect his, her brother, Lazarus, who was dead. But what caused the attention was that Jesus, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, even if they are dead, they will live. And all those who live and believe in me never will die. Do you believe in this? Jesus said. Do you believe in this? Well, our faith, dear friends, it has this greatness to see the invisible, to believe in the impossible. This is the faith that we have. This faith comes from the Holy Spirit. This faith is what gave a north to the life of Abraham that made him to stand up and to gather 318 men to go against four kings who had won five other kings and who had taken his law, his nephew Lot captive. So Abraham used this type of faith, the faith that God has given him, the faith to believe in the impossible, to see the invisible, the faith that is foolishness to this world. The world tries to explain through science faith, but they are not able to because it's something that we cannot explain. Because faith is something that is spiritual, is the Holy Spirit inside of us, enlightening us, inspiring us, guiding us, exhorting us, guiding us, nos guiando. Upon this faith, we have to base our lives. If we look at the circumstances, faith will not work. Abraham did not look at the circumstances. He knew that there were many kingdoms, and he only had 318 men, but he believed in the promise of God. He went to war with the weapons of faith. That's why he left with 318 men to combat thousands of men, thousands. In other words, if Abraham looked from the point of view of the physical side, the natural side of things, he would be doing a foolish things because everybody would die because we're just a few against many. We're 318 men against thousands and thousands of soldiers armed to the teeth. 
how would they win these battalions with only 318? But Abraham believed, Abraham carried with inside of him a conviction, a certainty that God was with him. There was a pact with God. There was a promise of God to him. I am with you. Be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. Out of you I'll make a great nation. So Abraham was obeying God. He was obeying God. And before that situation, when the situation came on his nephew being raptured, being captured, so he couldn't be quiet. He had to fight. But this was an inspiration of God. God gave him the victory. The same thing is here in this situation. When Martha came to speak to Jesus that Lazarus was dead, Lord, if you were here, he wouldn't have died. And then Jesus says like this, your brother will resurrect. Jesus said like this to her, pay attention, your brother will resurrect, resurrect. he will resurrect, and then her, still not believing, I know that he'll resurrect on the resurrection of the latter days, only the end of times, in other words. And then Jesus said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he who believes in me, as the Holy Scriptures says, Though he may die, he shall live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. When we look, when we evaluate the intelligent faith, we see the impossible. We see the invisible. We believe in the impossible. We believe in the word of God as it's written, as simple as it is. Even you who watch me, if you have this type of faith, make a test with God. Use your faith in the word of God. Verify, confirm. Confirm it. Make a test with the Word of God, and you're going to see that it's going to work, because it's the Word of God. The Word of God is spirit and life. And Jesus is saying here, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. The problem is that many people say that they believe, but they don't. It's a fake belief. Is a fake faith. So the result of life is small. Why? Because faith is not sustained on the word of God, but it's sustained on the circumstances. And then, when the circumstances are good, are favorable, the weather is good, how wonderful, I believe in God. But when the storm comes, when the problem comes, when it comes a death of a loved one, a disease, an infirmity comes, the enemies, hell comes, and then usually the person who is not founded, based on the word of God, the person who is not basing their lives on the word of God, they get confused, lost, they become desperate. It's what happened to the disciples of Jesus when they were in the small boat. And Jesus was with him, with them in the boat. Jesus was sleeping in the small boat. Then while a storm came and would toss the boat side to side, strong winds and rain, etc. And they went to wake up the Lord, saying, Lord, save us, because there is a storm. The small boat will sink, will go shipwreck. And Jesus told them, 
Why are you shy, men of little faith? Because they did not think, they didn't think. They only saw the circumstances. They only saw, saw the storm and the boat being tossed side to side. That's the only thing that they saw. They didn't see that Jesus was there. They didn't realize that Jesus was there in the boat. And that storm, if that storm will sink the boat, so Jesus also will sink and die. And Jesus didn't come to die like that. But poor them. Still, even though they were believing in Jesus, they did not have that much belief as we thought they had. Because in the moment of hardship, they became desperate. That's why Jesus said, men of little faith, timid in the faith. Dear friends, here, Martha, also, he said, he will resurrect. And Martha said, yes, I know, in the end of times. And Jesus said, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I am the resurrection and life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Even if they are dead as your brother, they will live. And he who lives and believes in me will never, will die. Nunca vai morrer. The body can die, but not what is inside of the person, which is the soul. Well, I would like you who watch me now, who is facing hard problems, difficulties, you are facing maybe death, facing problems, economical ones, problems with your family, problems with your love life. If you are firm or have founded your faith in the Lord Jesus, in the word of the Lord Jesus, because you and I, we don't see Jesus. But when I read his word, I see him talking to me. And the same happens to you. When you read his word, it's him talking to you. So, dear friends, let's base our faith in the intelligence. If Jesus is in the boat and the boat sinks, Jesus will go with us. He will sink as well. But do you think that that is the will of God? Of course not. If it's not the will of God, so he will not sink. If he will not sink, I will not sink as well, because I am with him. The same is you. You are in the small boat with him. So he will not sink. If he will not sink, so much less you will, will sink. But now it's necessary, it's needed, that you may base, that you may sustain this faith, not on what things shows, on what the circumstances shows, but you have to firm, sustain your faith in what is written, in what is written, not on the circumstances. There is where many people end up getting hurt, falling, and becoming frustrated in the faith because they base their lives Actually, they base their faith while things are well. But when the tribulations come, they run away. They want to run. They abandon the faith. And they stay lost without a church. Why? Because it didn't attend my need when I was in a moment of hardship. But the Lord Jesus himself, along with his disciples, went through problems, difficulties when they were in that boat. But, however, when Jesus is in the boat, in other words, when Jesus is inside of us really and truly, so we never die. We resurrect to life and eternal life. He doesn't resurrect anybody. 
to a circular life, to a limited life. When he does the work, he does it completely and perfectly. So learn to live in the supernatural faith and not in the natural faith. The natural faith is the one you sow rice, you reap rice. You sow beans, you reap beans. You sow lettuce, you reap lettuce. But the supernatural faith is you sow the word of God inside of you, you will see what you couldn't see. You will understand what God wants for you. You will see the invisible and believe in the impossible. It's, it's foolish. It's foolishness. It is foolishness for those who get lost, who perish. But for us, who are saved, is the power of God inside of each one of us. Praise God. Look, talking about it, I would like to call your attention to the third Sunday, actually, Sunday the 19th, Sunday the 19th, when we will have the day of the last chance. People that say, Bishop, one day, in the heat of the suffering, I said, Oh God, if you exist, give me a last chance. That's it. Only that. And I won't miss this opportunity. So on the 19th, we're going to have this campaign of faith to restore, to rescue those who have fallen, downcast, weak in this life. Is that okay? The 19th on Sunday, everybody is invited. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Deus abençoe em nome do Senhor Jesus.